for calculating ink coverage lesson are to define what ink coverage is, to calculate ink coverage for an individual press sheet, and then use that information to estimate the total quantity of ink needed for an entire press job. And then once we know how much ink in pounds are needed, we can use that to calculate how much the ink will cost. Let's start by answering the question, what is ink coverage? Ink coverage is the amount of paper that is covered in ink when printing. Each color that we print with will have its own ink coverage percentage. CMYK, or cyan, magenta, yellow, and black are the printing process colors. We print with varying amounts of each color to reproduce images. Orange, for example, is made from a combination of magenta and yellow. The amount of ink used to create an image affects how much ink we will need to buy for a printing job and ultimately how much we will spend purchasing that ink. We can easily see just by looking at the two examples below that both have a lot of blue, but can you tell exactly how much of each printing color, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black are needed to make these images? There's really no way for us to tell just by looking at the images in this format. Printing companies use something called color separations to identify how much of ink, each ink color, in this case, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, are needed to reproduce an image. Color separations are viewed in grayscale. They represent the density of the ink that is going to be printed. When you see black, that represents 100% density of whatever color that is. And then any shade of gray lighter than black represents some density lower than 100%. The images below represent the color separations for our two example images. As you can see, both images have varying levels of each color. Can you tell which separate separation represents which color, which one is cyan, which one's magenta, which is yellow, and which is black? For anyone who has some basic knowledge of printing, we can probably figure out that based on the example image, knowing that it's very bright blue and very bright almost cyan on the left hand side, um, we can probably figure out that the two darkest colors are cyan and magenta, but it's hard to be exactly sure which is which. One thing we can see is that the image on the right will print with more ink because the, the blacks that we're seeing are darker and denser than the colors on the left. Here is a breakdown of the color from the first image. Cyan is the densest color in the image followed by magenta. There is virtually no yellow or black. When calculating ink coverage for this image, the density percentages might look something like 80% for cyan, 12% for magenta, 1% for uh, yellow, and 0% for black. Here's the second image. Um, again, cyan is the densest color of the image followed by magenta. There is very little yellow or black. When calculating ink coverage for this image, the density percentages will be, will be higher than the previous image, and they might be something like 98% ink coverage for cyan, 62% for magenta, 2% for yellow, and 3% for black. Every time we print either one of these images, we will use significantly more cyan and magenta ink than yellow or black ink. Ink coverage factors. Two important factors must be taken in consideration when calculating ink coverage. First, what percentage of the overall press sheet is covered in ink? Commercial printing is done through the use of half tones. All colors are broken down into cyan, magenta, yellow, and black for printing. The colors are then applied to paper using various patterns of CMYK or cyan, magenta, yellow, and black dots. These dots are used to calculate the exact percentage of ink coverage used in a job. Graphic Arts programs can be used to get these exact numbers. I will give you the values for all of the examples in this class. Most importantly, ink coverage percentages, when you see something that says cyan equals 80%, are based on the overall press sheet in position, not on the individual image. So I know that for these examples, I showed you an individual image. But when you are doing your calculations for ink coverage, it's based on the overall press sheet that you're printing with. 
The second factor that needs to be taken into consideration is how much ink does it take to cover the page. Viscosity of ink and the type of substrate or the type of paper can determine how much ink it takes to cover an entire page with ink. This value is reported as a poundage of ink required to cover a square inch of paper or how many square inches of paper can one pound cover. So for example, one pound of Sun Chemical low tax cyan ink may be able to cover 10,000 square inches of paper. Knowing this information allows us to figure out how many pounds of ink are needed for an entire job. So for example, if I just make up some numbers right now, if we figured out that we have to cover 1 million square inches of paper with ink, we can divide the total coverage area, 1 million square inches, and divide it by how many square inches one pound of ink can cover. In this example, that's 10,000 square inches. When you divide a million by 10,000, the answer comes out to 100. So we've calculated that based on knowing how much one pound of ink can cover, we will need 100 pounds of ink to cover 1 million square inches of paper. Ink coverage percentages are based on press sheet impositions. An imposition is the way that items are laid out on a printing press sheet uh, in preparation for running it through a printing press. Um, when you do ink coverage percentages, they are not based on any of the individual or single items on the sheet. An imposition is the way that items are arranged on a press sheet for printing. A job may print four out or eight out or 10 out, however many out it does. When, you cover, when an ink coverage percentage is given to you, in this example, cyan is 45%. What it's saying is that 45% of the overall press sheet is covered with cyan ink. When you are looking at an imposition, the press sheet is what's important. So in these bottom examples, we have two press sheets. We have a 25 by 38 inch press sheet and a 19 by 25. It doesn't matter what the size of the press sheet is. If I am telling you that 45% of the press sheet is covered in cyan ink, um, your calculation will be based on 45% for the overall paper size or the press sheet size you're printing on. So 45% of a larger press sheet is going to have a lot more coverage area than 45% of a smaller press sheet. But your formulas that you will use will always come back to being based on the size of the press sheet being printed on. This is a really great slide to print out because it identifies the steps that we will follow to calculate ink coverage. Step one, we will calculate the total area of one press sheet. Area is defined as length times width. So if we're printing on eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper, the formula to calculate the area would be eight and a half times 11. If we were using 24 inch by 36 inch sheets of paper, we would multiply length times width, 24 times 36, and we would calculate the total coverage area for one, uh, for one press sheet. The reason we're doing that is because this gives us what 100% ink coverage would be. Then for step two, we can ask ourselves, but if I'm only covering 23% of the page in ink, or I'm only covering 84% of the page in ink, we can ask ourselves, what is 84% of the overall total coverage area? or total possible coverage area. So step two is to calculate the ink coverage for one press sheet that you're printing with. To do this, we'll multiply the press sheet area, whatever that was for step one, by the ink coverage percentage that we've been given. Remember, this will always be given to you and you have to calculate it for each individual ink coverage separately. If you're printing with four colors, you have to do it four times. If you're printing with three colors, you do it three times. If you're printing with 10 colors, you have to do it 10 times. Once you know what the coverage area is for one sheet of paper, for step three, we are going to multiply the coverage area for one sheet times however many sheets you're printing to calculate the total ink coverage for all of the press sheets. And then once you multiply the coverage area of one sheet times all of the sheets that you're printing on, that will give you the total coverage area in inches squared for the entire press job. So then for step four, we can divide the total coverage area needed to print by 
the ink spread or how many square inches every one pound of ink can cover. This will give us the total number of pounds of ink needed for the job. And then I have this little paragraph as a caveat, but we'll, we'll work through examples together. But essentially, whatever the answer comes out to, you are going to round it up to the next even pound of ink because you have to buy ink in even pounds. So in this example here, if the calculation comes out to 23.2 pounds, we're not going to round down to 23 because we won't have enough ink to print our whole job. But we have to buy even pounds, so no matter what it comes out to, we're going to round it up to the next whole pound. In this case, we would round 23.2 up to 24 pounds. I know that's a lot, so I would highly recommend printing this slide. So let's walk through some examples together. There will be two examples that we walk through for each step. So make sure that you keep them separate in your notebook. Like maybe start example one on one sheet of paper and then do example two on a separate sheet of paper. So step one is to calculate what the total coverage area of one press size sheet or PSS is. I'm going to read through this example, um, but it is the same example one that will be in all of the slides. So I'm only going to read through it once. How much ink is needed to print 125,000 8 and a half by 11 inch flyers? Ink coverage values have been determined by ABC Printing Company to be 23% for cyan, 87% for magenta, 17% for yellow, and 56% for black. Sun Chemical has provided the following ink coverage information. All inks, in this case cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, will print 50,000 square inches per per every one pound of ink. The job will print four out on 19 by 25 inch press sheets, which means, the math has already been done for you, that we will print 31,250 press size sheets. Step one is to calculate the total coverage area for our press sheet. It's a little challenging because in these examples, there will be your item size and your press sheet size, and you have to be able to determine which is the size of the product that you're making when you're done and which is the size sheet that you are printing on. In this case, we are printing four out on 19 by 25 inch press sheets. So to calculate the area of our total press sheet, it's 19 inches times 25 inches. 19 times 25 is 475. Inches times inches becomes inches squared. So if we were to cover our press sheets with 100% of any ink coverage, we would have to cover 475 square inches for every one sheet of paper that goes through the printing press. But we're not printing 100%, we're printing 23%, 87%, 17%, and 56%. Okay, that was example one. Try example two on your own. Let's read through it, and then after I read through it, pause the video, calculate your answer, and then we'll review the answer together. So example two, how much ink is needed to print 75,000 11 by 17 inch flyers. Ink coverage values have been determined by Ramsey Printing to be 9% for cyan, 28% for magenta, 31% for yellow, and 12% for black. Sun Chemical has provided the following ink coverage information. All inks, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, can print 65,000 square inches for every one pound of ink. The job will print four out on 25 by 38 inch press sheets which means the, the number of sheets that's been calculated for you, we will print 18,750 press sheets. Take a minute to answer, to calculate your answer for step one. What is the area of the press sheet being used? When you have an answer, press play and we'll review the answer together. The press sheet in this example is 25 by 38 inches. 25 times 38 is 950, inches times inches becomes inches squared. So the total coverage area for example two's press sheet is 950 inches squared. And again, what that means is that if we were printing 100% ink coverage, we would have to cover 950 square inches with ink. If we move on, step two asks us to calculate the ink coverage for one press sheet knowing how much percentage we're printing. When you do step two, you must calculate it for every ink color being printed. 
in this example, we're printing cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, so you can see I had to calculate it four times. Cyan is 23%, and basically what we're asking is, what is 23% of our total press sheet? And we've already calculated the area of our press sheet to be 475. So what we're asking ourselves is, what is 23% coverage of the whole, which is 475 inches squared? When we do uh, math problems, we need to convert a word problem into a math problem. And so 23% can be converted to a number by dividing by 100. 23 divided by 100 comes out to 0.23. Of can be changed to a multiplication sign. And then we'll just bring over 475 inches squared. Our math problem becomes 0.23 times 475. And that comes out to 109.25 square inches. So every individual press sheet has 109.25 square inches of cyan ink coverage. And then we repeat that for the other colors. So for magenta, we have 87% ink coverage. So we ask ourselves, what is 87% of 475? 0.87 times 475 equals 413.25. Yellow is 17%, so we ask ourselves, what is 17%? of the whole press sheet, which we've already determined to be 475 square inches. 17 converts to 0.17, or 17 percentage converts to be 0.17 times 475, or 80.75 square inches of ink coverage for every one press sheet. And then last but not least, black is 56% ink coverage, so we ask ourselves what is 56% of the sheet, or what is 0.56 times 475, and that comes out to 266 inches squared. I would pause at this point and just double check your math. Um, the percentages will tell you which color should have the most ink coverage. So when you look and see magenta has 87% ink coverage, then that means that when you look at the final values, that number should be the highest. And then it should be black because that's 56%. And then it should be cyan because it's 23%. And then yellow is last. If for some reason your values are out of whack, that should be a red flag that you should double check the math. And again, these are only values for one sheet of paper that's going through the printing press. If we wanted to calculate the total amount for the whole job, we would have to multiply these values times the total number of press sheets. But before we do that, let's practice step two with example number two. We've gone through the word problem together, so I'm not gonna read it again, so I would like you to pause this video and try to calculate the total ink coverage for one press sheet for all four of the colors being printed. When you have an answer, press play and we'll review the answer together. So we do the same thing. We ask ourselves, what is the percentage of ink, whatever that is from the problem, of the total press sheet? The press sheet for example two was 25 by 38 inches, and we've already decided that that's 950 square inches. So that's what we're saying that if we had 100% ink coverage, we would be covering 950 square inches of ink of paper. But we're not. We're covering 9%, 28%, 31%, and 12%. And so we ask ourselves for cyan, what is 9% of the total press sheet size. 9 becomes 0 0.09 when we divide by 100, and then we can multiply that times 950. So cyan will cover 85.5 square inches of paper with ink. What is 28% of 950? Magenta covers 28%. That is equal to 0 0.28 times 950, or 266 square inches of ink coverage. Yellow covers 31%, so we ask ourselves, what is 31% of the total press sheet? That is 0 0.31 times 950, or 294.5 square inches of ink coverage. And then last but not least, we have black, which covers 12%, so we can ask ourselves, what is 12% of the overall sheet size? And that comes out to 0 0.12 times 950, or 114 square inches. So every one sheet of paper needs to cover this many square inches of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. 
Moving on to step three. So now that we know how much ink coverage is needed for one press sheet, we can calculate the value for all of the press sheets. So our first example are eight and a half by 11 inch flyers. We have already calculated that every one sheet of paper will have 109.25 square inches of cyan ink, 413.25 square inches of magenta, 80.75 of yellow, and 266 of black. Knowing that we are printing, in this case, 31,250 press sheets, because the problem told us that, if the problem doesn't tell us how many press sheets, you're gonna have to calculate that value using the number out formula that we learned about in the previous lesson. But we know it in this problem, so we'll just plug it in. So the formula that we use to calculate the total coverage area for all of the press sheets is the coverage area for one press sheet times the total number of press sheets. So you'll notice that the number of sheets should be the same for every single ink, every single ink um, color because we're printing the same number of sheets for the entire job. And so we'll take cyan, 109.25 square inches of ink coverage for one sheet, multiply that times 31,250 total press sheets to get a total ink coverage area of 3,414,062.5 square inches of ink coverage. For magenta, we're covering 413.25 square inches on one sheet of paper. Multiply that times 31,250 press sheets, which gives us a total coverage area of 12,914,0625 square inches. Yellow is 80.75 for one press sheet. Multiply that times 31,250, and it has 2,523,437.5 square inches of ink coverage. And then black is 266. Multiply that times the number of press sheets, and we get a total coverage area of 8,312,500 square inches of ink coverage. Notice I haven't rounded anything for these formulas um, at all through step three. Let's practice calculating the total ink coverage area for all press sheets for example two. See if you can calculate the values for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And when you're done, press play to review the answers with me. In this case, in our 11 by 17 inch flyer example, we are printing 18,750 sheets of paper or press size sheets I know that because the problem told me that. The values that we previously calculated for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black for one sheet of paper were 85.5 for cyan, 266 square inches for magenta, 294.5 for yellow, and 114 for black. We'll multiply these values for one sheet times the total number of sheets, 18,750, and that will give us the total coverage area for the entire printing job that we're about to print. 85.5 times 18,750 means that we will have 1,603,125 square inches of ink coverage for cyan ink. 266 times 18,750 means that we will have 4,987,500 square inches of ink coverage of magenta ink. 294.5 times 18,750 comes out to 5,521,875 square inches of yellow ink that we need to print. And then black is 114 square inches times 18,750 press size sheets. And that comes out to 2,137,500 square inches. After step three, we now know exactly how many square inches of paper are going to be covered in all of our ink colors. So for step four, we are going to calculate how many pounds of ink are needed. We do this by dividing the total ink coverage area, those values that we just calculated, and we're gonna divide it by whatever the ink spread value is. An ink spread is the amount or the number of square inches of paper any one pound of ink can cover. You can't calculate how far one pound of ink will spread, 
So you have to pull it from the problem. It will be given to you. So for this example, we'll take the total coverage area, and again, we have to calculate it for every color we're printing, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, and we'll divide it by the ink spread. The ink coverage areas, I'm going to pull from the previous slides where we already calculated that. So for the first example, cyan was 3,414,062.5 square inches. Magenta was 2,914,062.5. You can read the other two. And then we're going to divide it by the ink spread. And in this example, when we read through the problem, we're told that all inks will, um, will print 50,000 square inches per every one pound. So that's the ink spread. So we're going to take the total coverage area for cyan, 3,414,062.5 square inches. Divide it by 50,000 square inches per pound. And when you do that math, it will come out to 68.28. We can't buy part of a pound, so no matter what that value comes out to, I would like you to round it up to the next whole number. And in this case, we'll buy 69 pounds of cyan ink for this job. Magenta was 2,914,062.5 square inches. We'll divide that by 50,000 because the problem told us that that was what the ink spread is. And that will come out to 58.28 pounds. We can't buy part of a pound of ink, so we'll round it up and buy 59 pounds. Yellow is 2,523,437.5 square inches. When that's divided by 50,000 square inches per pound, we will need to purchase or we will need exactly 50.47 pounds, but we'll round that up and say that we're going to purchase 51 pounds of ink. Black was 8,312,500 square inches of ink coverage. When that's divided by 50,000 square inches per pound, we'll need to purchase 166.25 pounds of ink, which rounds up to 167 pounds of ink. Give this a shot for example number two. Go back to the slide where we calculated the total coverage areas and make sure you have these values written down. Once you have them, Use the word problem to figure out what the ink spread is for this problem and divide the total coverage area for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black by the ink spread for this type of ink. When you're done, press play and we'll review the answers together. The ink coverage areas for example two are 11 by 17 inch flyers were 1,603,125 square inches of cyan, 4,987,500 square inches of magenta, 5,521,875 for yellow, and 2,137,500 for black. This problem tells us, if you read through it, that whatever ink they're using, whatever ink and paper combination they're using, we should expect to have 65,000 square inches of ink coverage for every one pound. So we're gonna divide those values by 65,000 square inches per pound. When you do that, 1,603,125 divided by 65,000 comes out to 24.66, which we will round up to 25. 4,987,500 divided by 65,000 comes out to 76.73 pounds, or rounds up to 77 pounds of ink. 5,521,875 square inches of ink coverage divided by 60,000 square inches per one pound comes out to 84.95 pounds or 85 pounds when we round up. And then last but again not least, black is 2,137,500 square inches of ink coverage. When we divide that by the ink spread, we get 32.88 pounds, which rounds up to 33. Once you know how many pounds of ink are required to print a job, we can use that information to calculate the price of the ink. The formula to calculate the price of the ink, I like to say that it's like candy bar pricing. It's the number of candy bars you're purchasing or the number of pounds of ink that you are purchasing multiplied by the price per candy bar or the price per pound. So if we're purchasing 10 pounds of ink, and it's a dollar a pound, 10 times $1 equals $10.
So when you get a word problem, it will have all of the information that you need for the entire problem. Our previous examples didn't include the cost of the ink to try to keep the problem small. So if we expand upon that information, and I tell you, for example, one, how much ink is needed to print 125,000 eight and a half by 11 inch flyers. We've calculated the following ink quantities, and I've written them here for you, 69, 59, 51, and 167. And our ink supplier is charging us $1.25 per pound of ink. The formula, and again, it has to be calculated for each ink color individually, is pounds of ink times the price per pound. In this case, we're printing with CMYK, so all the ink colors cost the same. But if you are printing with like a metallic gold or a metallic silver, it might not be the same as CMYK. It might be $25 a pound instead of $1.25 per pound. So for this example, we have 69 pounds of cyan multiplied times $1.25 per pound. So our cyan ink will cost us $86.25. We have 59 pounds of magenta multiplied by $1.25 means we'll pay $73.75 per pound. Um, sorry, $73.75 for magenta. 51 pounds of, of yellow will cost $63.75 and 167 pounds of black will cost $208.75. So if I asked you what is the total cost for the ink for this job, we would sum those values together. So 86.25 plus 73.75 plus 63.75 plus 208.75 would sum for a total of $432.50 just for the ink to print this job. We would still charge the customer for the paper that they're buying and for the time that they're on press and a number of other things. But for the ink, we would say your job will cost $432.50 for the ink. Try example number two on your own. How much ink is needed to print 75,000 11 by 17 inch flyers? We've calculated the following ink quantities and I've repeated them here for you. Our ink supplier is charging us $1.78 per pound for cyan, magenta, and yellow, but for whatever reason, the black is cheaper and it's only $1.50 per pound. How much will it cost us for each ink individually? And what is the total cost for the ink portion of the job? Pause the video and when you're ready to move forward, press play and we'll review the answers together. 25 pounds of cyan times $1.78 per pound means we'll spend $44.50 on cyan. 77 pounds of magenta will cost 137.06 cents. 85 pounds of yellow will cost us $1.51 and 30 cents. Um, not $1.51, $151.30. cents. And then black is 33 pounds, but it's priced differently. It's only $1.50. So 33 times $1.50 per pound means we'll spend $49.50 on the black ink. If you sum all of these values together, the total cost of the ink portion of this job is $382.36. After completing this lesson, you should be able to define what ink coverage is, to calculate ink coverage for press sheets, to estimate the quantity of ink required for an entire printing job, and calculate the total price for ink needed. In addition to these minimum requirements listed, I would also like you to understand that when you're given an example, like example two that you're seeing on this slide, if you're not told how many press sheets you're printing, you cannot calculate the ink coverage until you first calculate how many press sheets are needed. For this lesson, since it's quite long, we're not going to practice doing that, but we will practice that during the next lesson when we're calculating how many sheets of paper are needed and how much they will weigh for our printing job.